We don't see bees as an ordering platform, right? Mm-hmm. If it was just a place where to get your delivery, wouldn't have really changed much in the lives of our, of our customers or our business. It's around driving that efficiency and that change and, and bees was designed to do exactly that. Welcome, my guest at this time, our tech sales and route to market director, Lorraine Stey. Nu gaan het vrienden. Lekker en jij. Bye, Welcome to the Mortier's podcast. Thank I'm really you. excited to unpack the amazing work that you do because yeah. a lot of people simply don't know how cool the part of our business is that you lead. But before we get there, let's talk about you. Um, talk to us about your background, where you grew up. Who is Lorraine Stein? So thanks for having me, Spare. It's really an honor to be on the More Cheers podcast. Yeah, so I'm from Newcastle, a small town in Kaiserin, actually. Wow. Yeah, and my family's still there, uh, very much born and bred Kaiserin, so very much still a, a soft um, spot in my heart. Um, I moved to Port Vegas or Northwest University, if you want to be formal about it, <laughs> where I studied BCom marketing. Um, mm-hmm. I did my postgrad there as well. Um, I did a second postgrad through Henley a bit later. Um, but I think, yeah, reflecting back on, on my background, where I'm from, how I landed up here, I can, I can really see God's hand in my life, mm-hmm. the decisions that I've, I took with his steer, the doors that opened, the doors that wouldn't open, that, that just like remained, <laughs> remained closed. And I'm super grateful, I think, for, for the journey and, and how, I, how I managed to ultimately be afforded a, a role at, at SAB. Mm-hmm. Um, if I think back on, on my time in Port specifically, it was really a time, looking back now, that I was exposed to completely different walks of life that I didn't necessarily have growing up. Um, and it completely changed my outlook and I think the way that I approach solutions, the way that I approach my people, relationships, um, and I'm super grateful, right, for the friendships I was able to make mm. there, um, the people that still have a meaningful impact in my life today. So, so Porch in that time, although I also lived my best life while I was there, obviously, <laughs> it was more so for me the relationships I built and the life skills I learned while, while in Porch. Um, I was quite focused on making sure I'm part of the right committees, leadership roles where I was, was able to support the, the university. And I think those things laid a strong foundation for me as I, as I moved on in my career. So super grateful for, for Porch and, and the people that I met there ultimately. I love that view of the journey in totality. I always believe that everything is requisite and everything is redeemable. The good, the bad, the in-between, it all works together um, for our good. So talk to me now about your journey in SAB. I mean, like I said, you grew up in the company, Heike. You came in as a single lady. You're yeah. now a married yes. one. What does that journey look like from a professional point of view? So, so professionally, thinking back to doors that opened and closed at the right time, mm-hmm. while I was in Porch, actually in my final year, I was a part-time lecturer, um, which I really loved. It was something that's like a bit of a side passion for me still. But the professor that appointed me there was um, approached by an SAB recruiter at the time, Umvili, who's now no longer with us anymore. But many of our, our great leaders today were appointed by Umvili and fondly known as that. Wow. So I had my coffee date with Umvili um, and he sold the SAB dream and I just bought in to all of it, right? Um, it was very clear for me that day that this is an organization I want to be part of. I don't think I up till that point really ever was sure exactly what I wanted to do, what career specifically I wanted to follow. Marketing's also quite broad. Yeah. Um, but I think what I always knew is that I wanted to be at a company and in a position where I could make an impact and drive meaningful change, um, not just on results, but on people. Um, mm-hmm. And I can honestly say today that thanks to Mvili for organizing the right setups, a um, couple of doors first weren't opened and ultimately I landed in Johannesburg as a frontline BDR or an account manager. Um, so I really grew up through the ranks in Very SAB. Much so, yeah. Yeah, and, yeah, super grateful for that, right? So I think I was, throughout my career, really exposed to great leaders, great teams, great learnings. Um, and I was super fortunate, right, in terms of how this thing progressed. I worked through frontline sales, ultimately worked in trade marketing, so very passionate about draft, and, and my husband still today gets, uh, I think I embarrass him when we go out <laughs> and I send back a draft that's not poured well or in the it. wrong glass. It's, it's a bit of a pet peeve of mine. You do become that it's, way when you work It's here. like in you. You, you want it help, in our glassware. You it's want it deal. super cold. You want the right kind it of foam. It must be the whole thing, right? And there's nothing better than a cold draft. So yeah, I spent a bit of time in trade marketing mm-hmm. on draft and then ultimately um, 
moved into frontline operations, looking after our frontline structure, strategy, operational efficiencies. And then now, two years later, um, Tech Sales and Route to Market Director for SAB, leading our digital Route to Market transformation. I absolutely love that for you. And it's such a beautiful journey of growth because what it does is by the time you're now at the leadership level that you're at, because you've worked in so many of the roles that report into you, you have a real empathy yeah. and understanding of what it means to be on the front line. And Absolutely. so the strategies yeah. and the interventions will always make sense. And exactly. I think that's really, really cool. It's about packing the fridges. Eh? <laughs> it starts, <laughs> that it starts there. The simplicity <laughs> and the power of packing the fridges. Exactly. Now, another cool thing that happened to you this year is you became yes. a partner okay. here at SAB. And so I wanted to read this so that I don't mess it up. It says, partners are colleagues we confidently believe will continue to play a significant role in creating superior long-term value. They see you as an influential role model of our culture, someone who's committed to developing the people around them and delivering excellence through their teams and in collaboration with stakeholders in the right ways. What was your path to partner like and what does this designation within the business mean for you? Yes, also my actually I, no, I said to you, also my get emotional again, because <laughs> at the during the induction ceremony you're so overwhelmed you, you don't like even hear what they're saying um, over the over the like mic and I think you were still reading it but you being a partner at a company at this size scale impact that AB InBev has this mm -hmm. early in my career something that I'm very proud of and extremely grateful for right I think if we think back oh, it's it's not something that I can really say I did on my own. Mm -hmm. It was because of the leaders I had, the teams that worked with me, my husband, everyone like played such a big role in, in getting to this point. Um, it was a dream I had and kept in my heart um, secretly a little bit. It's not something you go like <laughs> broadcasting. Um, but I'd secretly in my heart kept this dream, hoping that one day I would be fortunate enough to be inducted as a partner at AB InBev. Um, and yeah, it happened this year in, in June, July. Super grateful. Um, like you said now, what for me stood out that day is during the induction when Maria, or our zone CEO, spoke, he spoke a lot about that partners at AB InBev is not solely on what you've delivered up until now, right? It is, it's about the value the business sees you delivering in the long term, which really excites me, right? And that's part of why I love this business, is that we are not just short-term rewarding results today. Mm -hmm. We are actively investing in long-term growth based on the potential we see in our people, and that's something that I'm immensely proud of to be part of, um, so it's a massive honor for me and something we are that are and I just, just actually so can't deserving. get over how big the moment You're was so for me. You're so deserving. You're so deserving. Thank I you. think I may have cried a bit myself. Thank you for crying um, with me. It was a lot of ugly that the crying. The video I did was pre-recorded <laughs> because I was there screaming for you and Thank crying. You. <laughs> <laughs> but moving on now to the work that you do for our business. A lot of people don't know that SAB, in addition to being a beverage company, is actually a tech company. And you are also high key <laughs> leading the charge in that. Talk to us about the digital transformation and evolution evolution of this business and what it is that your team is doing to propel our country and our business forward. So, yes, it's such an exciting, I know everyone probably tells you when they come here, I have the best job, <laughs> but, but I think I really do have the best job, right? So I don't think I've ever come to work, well, ever, never mind this job, any job, not actively like keen, ready to go take charge yeah. of the day, right? That's just how we work and how we operate. But specifically working on transformation and our digital route to market is if we think about the future of sales, mm. it will never be what we knew it to be and what it is today, right? Facts. Every single day, our customers are demanding more, consumers are demanding more. The future of sales is changing every single day. And I'm proud to say that SAB and ABI globally is not only driving that change, but really leading it with impact. So mm. we have our B2B platform called Bees. It's a global platform. We are live in 23 markets globally. We've got more than 3.3 million monthly active users on the platform. Madness. So, so it's not a like fly, by, a fly night by night type of thing we, we're doing here. <laughs> so you're fortunate to your point to be leading that for South Africa and SAB locally, taking that global strategy and making it true for South Africa and for mm. our people and our business. Mm. Um, so we're three years down the line um, for bees in South Africa, um, and we are over 90% of our revenue is going through digital platforms. That's crazy. But I think for me, what's, what's more important is that we don't see bees as an ordering platform, mm -hmm. right? If it was just a place you order, get your delivery, mm -hmm. wouldn't have really changed much in the lives of our, of our customers or our business. Mm -hmm. It's around driving that efficiency and that change. And, and bees was designed to do exactly that, to make the lives of our customers easier, 
to grow their business and ultimately then to grow our business. And getting closer to our, real ta to our retailers in real time, connecting to them one-on-one -on, -one on a personal basis is really what sets us apart from what we, we did in the past, right? So for where we are today, I'm super excited for what bees can still and will still deliver for our business. It is way more than an ordering platform where our customers have 24-7 access, can order on their way to work, on their drive home, two o'clock in the morning in the bed. They can order whenever they want. But outside of that, it's really accelerating our commercial strategy. Mm. So it's making us more agile, more personalized, more deliberate, driving that one-on-one -on -one connection with every single customer that has the relationship with SAB. And that's really where the growth comes from, right? So when our customers thrive, we grow, Facts. and Bees is there to really meet their needs in every occasion. Um, with Bees having such a strong foundation in, in SAB globally at ABI as well, we expand our product offering in Bees, right, to make sure that we give our customers the full basket of goods, a one-stop shop, speaking to their needs, helping them grow and become more relevant in the market. And we do that through really key route-to-market partnerships to make sure we, we accelerate at the pace that is needed to drive growth for our customers and for us. Through this, we have a connected ecosystem, right? So never before have our support functions and our structures had the amount of data, insights, and analytics to have meaningful conversations with our customers because that face-to-face -face relationship is something that has and always will set SAB apart from Thanks. the rest. I absolutely love it. And, you know, when I go into trade um, and I go on trade visits and I always ask our retailers, you know, how they're finding the app. And um, it's always so cool how the app is functional, but also in terms of that face to face exactly. with your sales rep um, directly to get the data from there as part of the engagement. It really just is so qualitative. Super important. And I ap appreciate the, the business enablement that it is. And I think for me, the reason I love it so much is because personal passion point I just believe that it's time for the township economy to stop being othered yes. um, and for it oh. to be as mainstream yeah. as it is for our economy and to get the investment and the attention that it deserves to really elevate what's happening in our townships and I think bees is so powerful in really democratizing access to something digital okay. that's easy for people who maybe have been left out of those kinds of yeah. innovations and I think for it to be so central to yeah. the that we're now in the 90th percentile of revenue exactly. coming from that. I think absolutely incredible work. Um, but now let's talk about Lorraine, the leader, because you lead an army. Brilliant army. <laughs> a brilliant, brilliant army. army. It's a lot of humans <laughs> um, and a lot of work. Um, and what, number one, what is it like to lead that many people? And what is your leadership philosophy and style when it comes to leading? So, yes, I have, I have an incredible team, right? Yes, I, you do. I really do. And I know I'm biased, but it's fine because they really are so close to my heart. And, and besides the partner thing, that's probably the second thing I get most emotional about because I'm so proud of them, right, wow. for the work that they've delivered, how far we co we've come, the change we've, like, we've delivered for our business, mm. right? Um, I don't know that I have a, a leadership philosophy per se. What I do try and be is an authentic leader when I show up at work, right? And for me, that means for people are, for me, very important, right? So it's, um, it, I really spend a lot of my time getting to know and understand my people and my team, knowing what makes them tick, what they enjoy, what they do on the weekend, um, what their personalities are like. And that's how I think we work well together, right? Because I, I know them, I'm able to direct my coaching and my messaging and my steer in a way that I know is conducive for that specific individual. Right. I think our business, yes, we, ha we have a high-paced, high-performance, everything-now kind of culture, right? Yes. That's what makes us great. Yeah. But within that, if, you, if you're not focusing on our most important asset, right, our people, yes. making them feel valued, seen, appreciated, but still pushing for that high-performance results... I think that's where the sweet spot kind of sits, right? Mm. And I think I've got a very candid, open relationship with my team. I try and work with them rather than like leading in front. I don't, I, I often say to them, this is, we are all the leaders in this team. Thanks. This is not, it's not, not my result, it's our result. And we're running towards one common objective, right? It also helps if you recruit well. So that part. I really, <laughs> are, I'm, I'm super grateful for the team I have, but I think oh, in short, it's authenticity. Um, and creating that transparency in, in, within the team is what's helping us deliver results at scale. I love that. And I think to be so dynamic in the way that you show up, I, I mean, I've seen you 
at all kinds of different platforms. And I think one of the times I, one of the times when I walk past you guys um, that I enjoy is when you're sitting at an island with your team, yeah. thrashing out the things, yeah. brainstorming, problem exactly. solving, casual, right? doing it together. Yeah. Um, and I love that. Teamwork does make the dream work. <laughs> but who influenced you? Who yeah. are the leaders, the influences in your life that yeah. you believe molded and shaped you as a professional, yeah. you as a leader? So I think if we look inwardly, SAB has an immense amount of incredible leaders, right? And I think I was lucky. Um, I can't think back on, on any single line manager that wasn't incredible in their leadership style and the type of person they were. But, but I must say, I think there's one that specifically stands out for me, and it's um, our now country director of Zambia, Michelle Kilpin. Oh, we love Michelle. Yo, she's such an incredible leader. She's such a kind person. Yes. Uh, she's a friend now. Um, but I think learning from her was really, it was a couple of things, right? But I think the one is that she absolutely always had time for people. Mm. Or had and still has time True. today. I still now, if I'm like, listen, I don't know what to do. Can we have a chat, right? So, I'll just text her randomly as well. Yelda. So <laughs> she's incredible like that. That doesn't matter how much is on her plate. Yeah. She always has time for people. She fostered this thing around not leading from the front, but leading alongside your team, right? Mm. And really getting stuck into the detail with them rather than coaching and leading from the front, which I, I'm, is something that I try and, and do every day with my team as well. Mm -hmm. And I think thirdly, she really paved the way for many female leaders in our business, That's right? True. Without making it super dramatic, her message was always hard work will be rewarded. Mm -hmm. um, whether you're a female or not, right? Mm -hmm. That's kind of secondary, which is great for the rest of us, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's what you want. You want to be seen, noticed, recognized for your work. And she absolutely paved the way for that, right? And on top of that, she's a great person to have a beer with. So that part. Yeah, she's incredible. <laughs> um, if I think more recently now, so currently I report to Boris, SAB CEO. I mean, what a guy. I love him. So <laughs> he's just, what he does really well is he creates this unconditional trust yeah. within the team, right? So there's not a single person in our team that for a minute doubts that he doesn't have your back, right? Which mm. makes it so that you want to give your everything as well. So that unconditional trust in the way that he leads is really something that also stays with me um, and hoping to, to take that further in my career as well. I absolutely love those insights, particularly on the Michelle side around yeah. um, the power and the yeah. proof point that she, you, yeah. the many female leaders we have in our business are of our organizational value of meritocracy. Exactly. That we're not looking to tick boxes, but that we're absolutely. looking to reward those who are hardworking, the yeah. owners um, who think long term yes. to, to quote one of our principles. Absolutely. So I think that's absolutely amazing. In conclusion, Lorraine, what do you want your leadership legacy to be? You ask tough questions here at the, at the end. Um, so I, I saw this quote once and it said, and I might actually be Michelle as well that told me this quote, but it, it, was, it was around be somebody that makes everybody feel like a somebody. Wow. And that for me is so important, right? So from like Tobbs that makes the coffee, from Vusi in the mail room to mm. Boris, the CEO, for me that's super important, right? Yes. To, to make people feel seen, heard, valued, appreciated and through people then deliver the results that really drive change and impact. And, and that's why I love this business because I feel and experience that every day myself. What a wow. Well, Thank I'd you. like to propose a toast um, to you, to your Thank journey, you. to blazing a trail and pioneering, yeah, yeah. to making everyone feel like they're seen. Thank you. And um, a special shout out to Umvili, who brought you into the business. Umvili, cheers. <laughs> Love it. Like it. Thanks a million. <laughs> Well, that's a wrap for this episode of the More Cheers podcast. We'd love to hear from you, so please show your love, leave your comments, and subscribe to our YouTube channel and podcast. Stay sharp, and cheers till next time. The information, statements, comments, views, and opinions expressed or provided in this podcast are not necessarily those of SAB and may not be current. This podcast was recorded and is being made available solely for information purposes and is general in nature. SAB does not make any representation or warranty as to the accuracy or completeness of any of the content contained in this podcast and listeners are referred to the disclaimer contained at www.sab.co.za.